We greet you in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6 says, Tramp up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. I was speaking out in Minnesota at a youth conference, and one of the topics that I had was if I had my teenage years to live over again, and some of the things that I wish I could have done different if I would do it over again. And on the way home from that uh, speaking assignment, my wife asked the question, will you someday uh, give a topic if I had my children to raise over again? And all the things you wish you had done differently. And so that started me thinking of uh, what can I do to make sure that I live with no regrets? Well, I've come to the conclusion that you can't do it. You're going to get to the end of your life and say, if only I could do it over again. But I want to make sure that I do it very, very uh, uh, clearly and as best I can by God's direction. And so I began to ponder and think through some questions. And one of the questions I had, and uh, I don't see my notes there. Uh Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> One of the questions I, I uh, uh, asked, uh, I was a preacher, I don't know who the preacher was, I can't uh, tell you his name, um, was, if you want to know what a man believes, don't look at his children, look at his grandchildren. What will my grandchildren believe? And so I began to ponder, I want my grandchildren to be singers, I want my grandchildren to uh, be debt free, I want my grandchildren, a number of things I wanted to my grandchildren, but I wanted to conform uh, this, and I used that question a number of times. What do I want for my grandchildren? As a matter of fact, when Curtis came to ask if he could date Kelly, I said, uh, could you uh, tell me what's your vision for your grandchildren? And I gave him 15 areas that I would like to think through. Uh, because before I let you date my daughter, I want to know what your children are going to look like. And so uh, we ought to think that through. He never thought of that before. Kevin, next. One of the things I want to uh, say, I'm not sure if it's this slide or not, I am not chosen here because I'm the perfect dad. I've made many, many mistakes. There's lots and lots of things I should have done differently and I could have done differently and lots of things I could tell you that my hall of shame is huge, right? And so by God's grace, he has given some uh, benefit and I want to share those things with you and encourage you along the way. Spend more time with your children. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things I asked the older ministers in, in life, and I said, okay, so if you had your ministry to do over again, what would you do different, differently? And every one of the ministers I talked to said the same thing, spend more time with your children. And so I said, okay, the next question then is, how do you do it? I'm a minister, I'm a pastor, I have all these evening meetings, I have assignments. How do you spend more time with your children? They all had the exact same answer. I don't know. And so therefore I said, I have to figure it out. I'm going to make sure that I (coughs) do the uh, next thing. I'm not, okay. Spend more time, family night. We decided Monday night is our family night, and we're going to make sure that that's guarded. I had a, somebody ask me this past week whether I can come speak for their PTF, and it's on Monday night. I said, no, I'm not available Monday evening. That's family time. I'm going to spend more time with my family. I want to make sure that they know that they are a very high priority in my life. Uh, the next thing I, okay, we have teen encounter. And what I do is, and my wife and I, once a month, it's scheduled, it doesn't always happen, this, this is not nearly as regular as family night. Uh, family night comes around every Monday night, but once a month we aim to take our teenagers out for supper. And we just have a good time and allow them to share what's on their hearts, we share what's on our hearts, sometimes it's agenda, sometimes it's not, but uh, they enjoy Teen Encounter. And uh, uh, I encourage every family that has teenagers to spend some, to get a set aside time where you can have open dialogue and open discussion. And sometimes they say, Dad, we think there's an inconsistency in your life. Another thing I want to do with my children to spend more time with them is they go along with me. If somebody comes and says, hey, can you come out for a week to preach? I say, only if you let my family come along. If you have provisions for the whole family, then I'll come and preach for you. But I'm not going to be like my grandfather who uh, would go out and preach for a week or two and left his family at home on the farm to do all that work. I'm going to take my family along with me. The other thing we do is uh, on, their, on their 12th birthday, we, mom and I take them out for breakfast. We welcome them to the adult world. We explain what happens as an adult. We uh, explain the changing of your body from a child body to an adult body and why God did that and the whole purpose of that and the design of that. And then we say, now, anytime you have a question, you ask us an adult question. And I'm, uh, it's, it's an excellent thing. Spend more time with your family. Uh, hike the trail. 
Uh, I took my three sons when Kevin was 18, Austin 16, Trevor 14, and I took a six month sabbatical and I hiked the Appalachian Trail. I would spend five months out there on the trail. And I remember sitting up on Paul, Pulpit Rock, overlooking 81, traffic going back and forth and all this, just rush, 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 and I said, pity the man who can't take six months off to spend time with his children. And it's just an important time. Later I took my, uh, my girls uh, on a five week trip out to California, but it's very, very important that we make a high priority for our children, let them know that they are important to us. Uh, principle versus standards. I asked Donnie Weaver one time, I said, Donnie, I'd like to know the secret of your family. Uh, he, uh, there was eight siblings in his family, eight children, and all of those children left the church that they were brought up in and went to a more conservative church, whatever conservative means. You understand what I'm talking about, right? And they laughed, and I said, that's not the experience of my parents. It's not the experience of my grandparents. I would like to know how you did it. What did your parents do? And he said they taught the principle versus standards. The principles never change, right? Standards change, but principles never change. And so preach that. So one of the things I, I taught my children is you yield your preference. Uh, we all have preferences, and the Bible tells us uh, in honor, prefer one another. We surrender our preferences to the preferences of the brotherhood. And when my uh, daughter Kelly married into the Beachy Amish church, uh, uh, he, she said, Dad, if you had not taught us that we yield our personal preferences to the preference of the broader, broader brotherhood, I would have never been able to make that change. And so it's very, very important. That's one of the principles. Another principle is you avoid the concept of a preacher's kid mindset where you have to do this because I'm the pastor and you have to model it for the rest of the church. I never ask my children to do anything simply because I'm the pastor. I ask my children to do things because it's the right thing to do. Whether you're the preacher or not the preacher, this is the way you do things, and so we have to do that. Another, another was, <clears throat> was that kind? I ask that question often to my children. You know, there's behavior, and some, some uh, behavior, you don't have rules about everything in life, right? And you, children come up with things you never thought they could think of before. But ask the question, was that kind? Did, were you kind? And rivet that in their minds. It's a principle that we, uh, throughout life, we need to have that. Uh, John Drescher in his books about uh, marriage and parenting uh, emphasized the fact that if you want to love your children, the best way to love your children is to love their mother. Now, I have the advantage of having the very nicest woman in the whole wide world, and, uh, and so that's uh, you know, uh, my advantage. But I let my children know that. I tell my sons often, if you can find a wife half as good as, as your mother, you'll be very, very blessed. I tell my girls, if you can grow up half as good as your mother, you'll be very, very blessed. And some will be blessed. But you love your wife, love your, the children's mother. It's the very best thing you can do for your children, uh, according to John Drescher. I tried to apply that. Bill Gothman in his seminars say, whoever laughs with your children will have their heart. And so is the home a fun place to be? Is a, is a place where we're having happy memories? And so laugh with your children. Make sure that uh, life is not just work, 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 but there's lots of joy and lots of laughter, lots of fun in the home. <clears throat> Three questions that you ought to ask. Now, I don't remember again who, which preacher I heard this from, but uh, there was a preacher who said, if you want to know if you have the heart of your children, ask these three questions to your children. Do you know that I love you? Do you know that I love your mother? And do you want to be what I am when you're my age? And so when I heard that, and I thought that's a good question. So we had two married children at that time, and I asked them. We went out to the coffee shop, uh, their spouses, and I said, uh, do you know I love you? Absolutely. Do you know I love your mother? Absolutely. Do you want to be what I am? When and they said no. <laughs> and so uh, next, uh, next night we had teen encounter. I asked the teenagers, do you know I love you? Yes. Do you know I love your mother? Yes. Do you want to be what I am? They said no. And... Uh, so I had two little girls at home, and I said, yeah, and they said, yes, yes, and yes. Thank the Lord for innocence. Uh, <laughs> you know. <laughs> but we talked about it. Okay, so what don't you want to be? I don't want to be overweight. I don't want to be in debt. I don't want to have a messy garage. I don't wanna... and so, but we talked about those. We, we, <clears throat> we discussed that, and I purpose to work on it, right, and acknowledge that fact. Uh, we've got to tell our children, uh, forgive the bad and build on the good. I told my children one time, I said, isn't it so nice? All these families are grown up in homes that have so much inconsistency and so nice that you don't have a home. That you don't have to grow up that way. And uh, <clears throat> about a half hour later, they were done rolling on the floor laughing. And, uh, <laughs> but you know, talk about it. Be open and honest with that. And we, if you're not honest about your failures and what they don't want to be like in you, you're going to fail, you're going to miss them. I asked my father one time, <clears throat> I said, Dad, you had eight children. The oldest four have abandoned the way of life that you were trying to impart to your children. The youngest four have uh, walked in that way uh, to some degree or another. But uh, the, the four, your youngest four made it, your oldest four did not. I'd like to know what's, what's your perspective on that. 
And dad said, I loved all my children, but I liked my youngest four. We decided we're going to like them. You see, when they first have children, and every parent, I think, falls into this trap, we've got to have the perfect, everybody's watching us, you know, sit up straight, make sure you do this. And we just were so particular and so overzealous that these would turn out. And the last four, we just relaxed and just like them. We like to be around them. And so like your children. That's one of the things I want to uh, communicate to my children. I like you, not just love you. Get rid of anger. When my wife and I were memorizing, James <coughs> said, James uh, says, let every man be slow to speak, slow to wrath, for the wrath of man works not the righteousness of God. And I was meditating on that, memorizing that. God said, you know, Clayton, you're not going to, you're not going to win the city of York for Jesus or your children if you're angry. And I have, I could tell you all kinds. <laughs> all kinds of shameful things with anger, but you've got to get rid of it. We've got to confess it is sin. God said, get rid of all anger, all wrath, all malice. Don't let it once be named among you. There's no justification for anger. We've got to rid our lives of anger. We want our children to walk in our ways. <clears throat> Proverbs 22, 6. I start off with that. And I'll end with that. Proverbs 22, 6 says, A train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. Now, as I've been observing over the years, I acknowledge that most of the young families who have children who are not yet teenagers believe this verse means if I train them, that's how they're going to turn out. Those who are a little older who have teenagers or maybe one or two adults, they come to the conclusion that this verse really means... Um, if you train them, uh, generally speaking, that's how they're going to turn out. You might have one or two that, that chooses another path, but they all have free will. Then when you get older, you, uh, you talk to the older man whose children have all raised and all left the home. They say, well, what this really means is that it's still going to be with them. Even if they've chosen a different path, they'll never depart from it. It's in their heads. It's in their brains. They're going to have it. I look at this as a different way, and this different way is... Be careful, because your children are catching more than what you say. And the way you train them is how you're going to, they, they will not depart from that. I had a, a man at church who told me, that verse can't mean that what? It just can't mean that because, you know, my wife wore a covering and cape dress, and all of my children have abandoned the way of life, the, the way of the Bible. And, uh, <clears throat> and yet that brother uh, was never under authority, never under authority. He sold advertising signs. One of the signs said, uh, he had a helium balloon attached to his sign, said, our helium balloons defy all zoning ordinances. I contend that he did not, his children did not depart from what they were taught. Uh, my siblings were talking one day, and um, I told you the oldest four departed from what they were trained, and the youngest four sort of kept it, had the varying degrees. And so they said, it can't mean that. I mean, we all had the same parents, we all had the same training, so how can it be that one, you know, some of us departed? And I said, well, we know that when mom embraced every person, dad too, every person is a Christian. If, you're, if you say the name of the name of Christ, you're a Christian. And we, we grew up, we went to Baptist church, Methodist church, we visited everybody. And if they had communion, we took communion. Now, I'm not, I want you to hear me very, very clearly. Mennonites are not the only ones going to heaven. You understand that? I don't believe we're the only ones going to heaven. But we have to be very, very careful because we, we were taught that everybody's equal. It's all okay. And we didn't depart from that. My mother was a health food not before it was fashionable. I was raised without white flour, white sugar. And, uh, <clears throat> and she wrote all those books you men have to suffer through. I'm sorry for that. But uh, <clears throat> all those recipes. But um, our family reunions now have lots of sugar, lots of white flour. <laughs> we have all kinds. So how comes that we didn't, you know, my siblings said, how comes we didn't depart? You know, we didn't you know, hold that standard. I said, we all knew that when dad came home from work, we'd look in his lunch pail and see what tasty cakes he had that day. And so the, the, the message was, when you're with mom, this is how you eat. When you're away from mom, you can eat any way you want. And we have not departed from that. You know, when I think about, when I think about anger and your children and how fast they grow, how soon they're gone, be careful. Because the way you teach your children, your actions, your attitudes, what happens at home when your preacher's not watching, when the brothers of the church aren't watching, your children are catching that. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, do not depart from it. God bless you.